Welcome to Baseline Scientific. My name is Paul Scanlon and I'm going to show you what could be seen in the July night sky. It's hard to believe that we're already past the longest day, so the nights will be getting darker and as usual there is much to see. Well we start with a look at the phases of the moon. Then I'll take you on a tour of the planets and we'll finish off with a look at this month's constellation, Ursa Major. Let's get straight into it with a look at the phases of the Moon. The month starts with a waxing gibbous moon. Full moon is on the 7th. Last quarter is on the 15th. New moon is on the 22nd. And we finish the month with first quarter on the 28th of July. Now, let's look at the planets for July. Mercury starts the month as a morning object. It rises quite close to the sun being only 8 degrees above the horizon on the 1st. With each day it rises closer and closer to the Sun, till on the 14th Mercury is in superior conjunction. Wait until the end of the month and you'll be able to see Mercury once again in the evening sky, just after sunset. Venus will be a morning object throughout July. It should be quite easy to see in the morning just before the sunrise. At magnitude minus 4 and 22 degrees altitude on the 1st, it will make a good target. However, as the month progresses, like Mercury, it will rise closer to the sun. If you want to observe Venus at its best, do so sooner rather than later. Mars is now getting into a position to be worth observing, although perhaps not good enough yet for imaging. In the latter part of July, it will rise in the early morning, about 1.30 GMT, and will be about 35 degrees altitude by sunrise. At magnitude 1.2 it should be easily visible, but the glare from the morning sun will cause problems. It will be another month or so before it will be best placed to observe. Jupiter is now visible throughout most of the night, passing the meridian in the early morning. However, it never gets very high always staying below 25 degrees when observed from the UK. But at magnitude minus 2.3 it should be easily seen. Have a look in the constellation Capricorn just above Delta Capricorni. If you have a clear horizon then Jupiter is probably the best planet to observe this month. Saturn is now well past its best and for most of us it is probably lost in the evening dusk. Situated just below Leo you may well be able to spot it in the late evening but it's beyond being a good target. Saturn won't be back for some time. Uranus is also now a good possible target. At magnitude 5.9 you will need a telescope or binoculars to observe it. But at well over 30 degrees altitude when it passes the meridian it shouldn't be too difficult. Have a look just under Pisces in the early morning. You won't be able to see any detail 
but in larger scopes you may be able to see a small disk. If you don't have any luck, then give it a week or so. It will rise later and be better placed. Neptune is close to Jupiter this month, which acts as a good signpost. Look for Jupiter and then move up just a little. Neptune is magnitude 7.8, so you will need a small telescope to see it. Have a look over successive nights and you should see Neptune move slightly. And at just under 30 AU distance from us, it's the furthest object in the solar system that can be seen easily. Ursa Major, the Great Bear, is this month's constellation. It's also known as the Big Dipper and the Plough, and is perhaps one of the most prominent constellations during the summer. Its seven main stars are instantly recognisable, almost directly overhead at about midnight. As such, it's mentioned in a number of mythologies from different cultures. Ursa Major extends far beyond the familiar plough constellation, taking in a large part of the sky and several messier objects. But let's start with Mizar and Alcor. These are a binary star system in the handle of the plough. They are separated by 12 arc minutes, so can easily be seen visually. Distinguishing these two stars was traditionally used as a test of eyesight. However, it's not that difficult to see them both. Mizar itself is in fact a binary as well, having two companions, Mizar A and B. These are significant as they were the first telescopic binaries discovered in about 1617. What's more, both these stars are binaries themselves. Mizar A was the first spectroscopic binary discovered by Pickering in 1889. The whole Mizar system lies about 78 light years from us and is part of the Ursa Major Moving Group, a dispersed group of stars sharing the same real motion. Also have a look at M81 and M82, two galaxies that can be seen through a reasonable sized telescope. M81 is also known as Bode's Galaxy. It is a striking example of a spiral galaxy with arms seen originating very close to its centre. At the centre there is believed to be a supermassive black hole making it a popular target for astronomy research. Close by is M82, which is viewed almost edge-on. These two galaxies are interacting with each other, resulting in star formation in M82. This makes it five times as bright as our own galaxy. One of the most striking aspects of this galaxy is the dust lanes that can be seen clearly when imaged. Don't miss out on M101, the pinwheel galaxy. Unlike M82, we see this one almost face on, allowing spectacular imaging of the spiral arms and bright centre. M101 is about twice the size of the Milky Way and has a mass of over a hundred billion solar masses. Well, that's it for this month. I hope you enjoyed the programme. We'll be back with the August edition, so I hope you'll join us then. See you next month. Goodbye.